Morning, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to Wessie's Angling. You're joining me and my dad today at Mia Lane Fishery and we're going to be doing a little bit of specimen fishing. We've come for a day session, so it's just turned light as you can see and we're going to be fishing all the way through till dusk. We have to be off for half four apparently, so looking forward to giving it a good go. I'm going to be fishing with the solid PVA bags and doing a, a really minimalistic approach today. There's some really nice fish to target in this fishery. Carp up to 30 pounds, a big sturgeon, a couple of catfish, some nice bream and tench. So plenty of fish to target. We're after anything today. Will we blank? Will we get a fish? I don't know. That's always the risk when you come for a day session specimen fishing. you are just got to catch it on the right day. As you know, when you go and do this kind of specimen fishing, it is always better to bivvy up through the night because usually you've got a higher chance of getting a bite in the twilight hours, as it were. But we're going to see if we can get a couple of bites through the day today. Fingers crossed for us. So I'm still going to post the video even if we don't catch. So you know that it's going to be an absolutely honest day's fishing. Nothing made up, nothing sugar coated. So me and my dad are going to have a look around the lake, see which peg we fancy fishing. There's nobody else on it at the moment. I think there's two others booked on it for today. So we're not on our own. They're doing a day session as well. You can fish overnight here at Mere Lane if you didn't know that. So if you wanted to give it a go overnight, I'll put a link in the description for Mere Lane. I'll put the address down there so you can have a nosy at it. So me and my dad were discussing our tactics last night, as you do, and we decided that we were probably going to the pegs fishing into the wind. Now, there's only a slight breeze on the water today, which to be honest with you, isn't ideal. It's gonna get 40 miles on the wind. Is it? Yeah. So the wind is picking up and it's gonna be blowing into this corner. Yeah, it's bubbling, so it's coming this way. Right. So that's really where we want to be fishing, I think. I am told that the top end is the best so a lot of the bigger fish come out the top end but we couldn't get a bite down there last time could we dad no you caught off that peg didn't you yeah i caught off that peg there fishing tight up to the island with a um with a pva mesh bag actually usually reeds around here in summer obviously everything's been cut back now because we're coming into autumn Nice setting here at Mere Lane, isn't it, Dad? Mm, yeah, it is nice work. As you know, one of the issues that we picked up on last time we fished here is how close the pegs are together. So there's a potential that people can come and sort of sit on your knee. They can they can come and bivvy up right next to you. But I'm hoping that doesn't happen today. I'm tempted for us to fish that corner. Yeah. One of us here, that peg, and one there will be parked. Yeah, and then you can. I can see if you've got a fish, and you can see if I've got a fish. You've got the corners, you've got the sides. You can get to island there as well. Well, what I'm going to do is I'll clip up first with just the lead on, and try and obviously get it near enough to the island, and then I'll put I'll tie the PVA bag on and i'll cast it over but i'll show you that process i'll talk you through all that i'll have one to island over there into the middle and i might even try one in deeper water here two pva bags small wafters bottom baits so really subtle approach not floral wafters either they're a, they're a dark colored wafter yeah you can park right behind your peg here at Mia lane which is very good it's going to be a sit and wait approach today, yeah. folks. I, I'm, start showing yeah, I mean, I will probably, I'll probably only recast every three hours, something like that. I'm going to leave them in a good amount of time, let the fish settle, let them find the bait. Right, folks, I'm going to drive round, we'll get our stuff out, I'll get set up, and we'll reconvene. I've been buying tackle again folks, got myself a bivvy table, no I've not got a bivvy today but I am, I am going to put the pentalite shelter up but just a little bit of a, a little bit of a table here 
for bits and pieces. And that's got some storage underneath there. This is a West Lake one. Looks decent enough. Nice and sturdy. Got crap all over it already. <laughs> so yeah, looking forward to getting a PVA bag out. Like I said, I'll have to clip up. Furl cast over there to that island, but I'll manage it, I think. So, the bait I'm going to be using today. I've got a mixture of pellets. I've got some 4 mil krill. I've got some DNA bait crayfish mini mix. And I've also got some Aquastim F1 Sweet and also some Aquastim Black Magic in there as well. So a right mix. I've already tied up some PVA bags, so they're ready to go. Literally just need to tie them on, cast them out, and I'm fishing. I've got some in a separate bag here. They're mono hook lengths. And I've got some here. These are braided hook lengths. Okay, so organized myself i've had everything pre-tied up if you're wondering what the powder is in the bottom it's this stuff and i'm actually going to fill these with uh goo on the inside as well just for a bit of added added boost hopefully draw fish into the area well it's bloody typical in it i've just heard an absolutely massive carp crash over in the far margin <laughs> oh dear okay folks so it's going to be a little bit of a technical approach this time for me usually i'll just pub chuck it out and hope for the best but um i'm gonna fish over to this island to my left here and to this one so what i'm gonna do i've got three and a half ounce lead there now the leads i'm actually going to be fishing with in my pva bags are two and a half ounce so you might be thinking why am i casting a heavier one out well what i'm trying to do is account for the stretch in the line with casting something heavier out because once you put your PVA bag on full of pellets, that's a lot heavier. And it can actually stretch the line and end up with your casting much further than you actually wanted to. So I've just tied that on. And I'm going to have a couple of casts over to this island. Remember where I'm standing. So I'll stand right on the edge here, next to the platform. And try and cast over to the island here probably go for the middle of the island so it might take a couple of casts just to get this right right so I'm not close enough to clip up there need to be A little bit further out. I don't want to cast. I don't want to be casting out loads. I don't want to make that much disturbance. But I need to get it right. Tighter to the island. More chance of a fish. Right. Now I'm happy with that fairly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another couple of feet off because I'm a bit further away than the island. Like that. I just want to be a bit closer. So I've took a couple of feet off. I'm going to put that in my clip, okay, and then I'm going to reel in. Now, when I tie this uh, PVA bag on, that means I should be pretty tight up to that island as long as I hit the clip. So we'll see. So I'm going to cut this off and tie a bag on. I'm going to put a little bit of tungsten coated rig tubing on. Just to stop us getting tangled. Not much. I don't want much on. I want it to be fairly incognito on the bottom. So uh, about three quarters of a foot's fine. So I've just pushed the tube in into that tiny little rig rubber that goes over the, the end of the solid bag. And I'm just going to tie my bag on. Then I'm going to push this tail rubber onto the end of my solid bag stem. Now I need to cast this out and make sure it don't go into the, the island. <laughs> okay. Let's hit the clip. Absolutely spot on, folks. <laughs> I'm not shocked or anything, but that was pretty good. Right, let's take that out of the clip now. Oh, 
I want this on the left hand side. Well, that was a good cast that. I'm happy with that. Hopefully there's no snags near that island. I'm going to fish with a fairly tight drag. Right, same for the other one now. Was a little bit disheartening when I, <laughs> when I saw a big carp splash in the margin on the opposite side of the lake before. But it is what it is. I've already set up, so I'm not moving now. There's somebody else here as well, down that side. Looks like they're in the margins though as well, so I don't know whether I'll... So I'll start off like this, and then towards the afternoon I'll probably try down this right hand side towards the reeds. But I'm not going to be casting out every two minutes, like I said, a couple of hours, two, three hours, and I'll recast. I want to fish accurately today, best I can. I did ask about bait boats here, and apparently they're not allowed. They're only allowed if there's nobody else booked on. So, well, it is what it is. I like to fish with bait boats just because I think they cause the least disturbance. These PVA bags have come a little bit loose um, overnight. They were tight as anything when I tied them up yesterday. Hey Siri, set timer for two hours. So I've just set a two hour timer. When that goes off, we'll recast. Wind's picking up now into this corner, thank God. This is what I want. I'm injecting in a Westy's secret formula of krill glug and oil, salmon oil. So, I'm always watching for signs of activity, blowing, bubbles coming up, stuff like that. Now, it's a little bit tricky at Mill Lane because there are silver fish in here, which can be causing that kind of disturbance and bubbling and stuff like that. So we've got to take it with a little bit of a pinch of salt. It's quite obvious when a carp's feeding because you get a bigger plume of bubbles, more fizzing and stuff like that. So you can differentiate it. And at this time of year, you've got to be reasonably mobile. If you're not on the fish, then you aren't going to get a fish. And that is the honest truth of it. You can fish anywhere you like. If you're not on the fish, you just won't get them. Obviously, if you were fishing overnight and you had a load of time, then you can build up a better bait and wait for them to come to you. I'm not saying that you can't do that, but on a day session like this, on so much water, they're not going to find, you know, small amounts of bait in PVA bags. It's about pinching a bite. Now, the other benefit is that usually at this time of year, there's not many anglers on. So you have the potential to try different swims and be a little bit more mobile. Even on these commercials that we fish, you know, we don't fish any special lakes or anything like that. So that's that PVA bag re knotted on. Got my syringes. And we've got my oil and krill mix. I'm gonna get any of this on my hands, folks. Oh no! The syringe. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Put some more in. That'll fit come out of the syringe, like fired off. I think it's because it's so thick. I just know I'm going to get covered here. Ah, it's because it's like trigger loaded because there's so much gunk in it. in the bag and all over my hands okay let's tighten the drag up for the cast careful of the tree careful of not falling in the water and let's bomb this out Probably the exact same place as it was last time.
well, while I'm not catching anything, <laughs> I might as well go through some of the gear that I'm using today for you. So these rods are a Corum Opportunist Extend. Those of you that are following the channel will know that I've been testing these out over the last few weeks, and I'm pretty happy with them, to be fair. Lovely little rods, great casting action, nice playing action, nice and soft. Um, reels that I'm using are my Pen Affinity LTD 7000 reels, and these are loaded with 15 pound line, okay? And the line's Daiwa Sensor, which is my favorite line. Not Daiwa Ultra Sensor, which is absolute rubbish because they take all the stretch out of it, Daiwa Sensor. I've got some Preston Grip butt rests, which really help keep your rods secure when you get a run. So the alarms that I'm using are Sonic Gizmos, which I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not very happy with. They're a little bit flimsy, but they are cheap as out. So if you want a cheap alarm, the decent but my sonic skx were much better but i needed to replace them because they were on the way out i do wish this sun would ease off a bit i prefer a cloudy day when i'm doing this kind of fishing i feel like i never do well in bright weather i think it just makes everything a little bit too visible for the fish with the sunlight penetrating the water but that's just a little theory of mine. But yeah, in bright weather, I never do well. So we just need that cloud cover to come back and this wind to pick up, I think. If you do want to learn how to tie up a solid PVA bag, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner for you. And you can have a nosy at that for the beginners out there. Put another krill wafter on this one. The sticky baits krill wafters and this time I'm actually going to side mount it I like to play about with this I feel like a side mounted bait I might just give a better hook setting capability Blob that bait on and then I'm going to put this in a bag I would like to catch it any distance, right? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I like to just put a couple of these wraps around it with this PVA string and all. I don't know, I feel like it just holds it a little bit more secure for cast, but probably don't make any difference. A couple of passes with a PVA string just holds it solid, I think. Great little bag. Dad's got loads of crash into these margins over here. There's fish, I've just seen a fish crash on this margin. That margin don't know where he's fishing to <laughs> but there's there's fish definitely moving about on that side pretty quiet on my side there you go there's another one probably saw that on the camera so if he's smart he'll probably drop a rod there <laughs> we'll see we'll see what he does yeah looks like he is Oh, he's going for a he's going for a single hook bait. <laughs> he probably can't be asked tying another PVA bag up. 
I don't know what he's like. To be fair though, there is merit in using a, a single hook bait. The bailiff's just been round and she seems to think there's another four people coming on today. It's quarter past ten now. And it's uh, you're only allowed on here until four half four. Not worth bloody coming. This wind's picking up though, which is good. I might see if I can get a rig down that right hand margin. It's hard to know where to fish. I don't want to change tactics too much. Just need one fish for you all, either me or my dad. Like I said to you before though, folks, I will still post a video even if I don't catch. I just want to set realistic expectations for people that want to come out and do this kind of thing. You're not going to catch every time you come out. I know we do pretty well on the channel. We always seem to pick up the odd fish, but you know, this type of fishing with lower stocked lakes and specimen fish, you're not guaranteed to catch in a day session. You're not even guaranteed to catch in a 24 hour session. Do you know what I mean? So fishing will start slowing down now, coming into late autumn, into winter. But there's less people on the banks, which is why we absolutely love fishing at this time of year. And you just need to just lower your expectations slightly of what you think you're going to do and how well you're going to do and how many fish you think you're going to catch. Because otherwise you'll just be disappointed. Like if I got one nice bream, for example, today, you know, 15, 16 pound bream that are in here, I'd be chuffed to bits with that. So it's just setting your expectations a touch lower and doing what you can using your watercraft. Making sure you're in the right swims, which obviously if you don't fish it regularly, you're not really going to know that. You're just going to have to use your, like I said, intuition and watercraft. Right hand rod has been in two hours currently. And the left hand rod is the rod obviously I'm moving about, trying different blazes with, and that's been in an hour. It's gone really quick. Now, there's a couple of things I could try. I could try to the deeper water, which is just out from me here, probably about mid lake. It drops off considerably deeper there. And I could try down this right hand margin here. Hmm. Now the margin might be a little bit more productive towards the afternoon. And it's very awkward to get a rig down that way. I thought I might have had something by now. Well, folks, as you can probably see from the video, the wind is still pulsing into this corner. I've got a rig about mid water, hopefully towards the deeper water. And I've got a rig down this margin here. Dad looks like he's going for a recast. He's got method feeder on one of his rods. So we're scaling everything down. Like I said, trying a few things to get you a fish. But there's only so much you can do. I feel like we're in the right location with the wind blowing into us here. What do you think, folks? We've probably got about four, four and a half hours fishing left. Something like that. So plenty of time to pick up a bite. Fingers crossed. It's just a quick side note. I have got some winter merchandise on the website now. So I've got some uh, nice warm gilets and I've got jumpers, hoodies, uh, winter hats, caps as well, but I've got winter beanies. So there's good stock on the website. Obviously I've got some Westies wafters on there. They're in stock and I'm stocking some pellets and ground bait and, and bits of essentials like that. So if you haven't already done so, head over to www westiesangling.co.uk all one word and uh, check it out for me see what you think and for everybody that's already bought off the website thank you very much for supporting the channel supporting me and supporting my dad obviously there is a lot of time and effort goes into these videos filming setting up um, editing it takes me probably about 15 hours on average to edit one half an hour 45 minute video so it really does take some time and I still put them out there even if I don't catch and that's something not a lot of people do because I don't know I don't know whether they think it's shameful to come out fishing and not to catch obviously you do get negative criticism 
there's things I could be doing differently. There's always something you could be doing differently, folks. Always something you can be doing different. Uh, no matter what you're doing, there's always a different way. There's always a different opinion. But I'm pretty confident in the tactics that I'm using today, and I'm sticking with them. A lot of the time when it comes to fishing, all you can do is sit back and wait. We can't move now. Like I said, there's other people come on the lake. We've chosen our spot, and we're sticking to our guns. Also, folks, if you like watching people go out fishing and not catching, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit that bell icon as well. That way you don't miss another blanking video. <laughs> I'm always joking, folks. There's loads of videos on the channel. Check them out. I do catch on most of them, I promise you. <laughs> to be honest with you, I'd be happy with one of these uh, decent tench or bream that are in here, but to be honest with you, tench are usually one of the first fish to switch off at this time of year. They don't tend to feed past autumn and into winter. Oh God, this wind's picking up. Good for the fishing, bad for the pencil like Broly Shelter. I'm right facing it as well. I probably should have put it at a bit of an angle. So I knew it would be tough today, but I didn't think it'd be this tough. I'm just having to lie down on the old leather light chair. Probably going to leave these in another hour. They've been in probably about an hour so far. And then I'm probably going to cast out one more time and then leave them for the rest of the day. I'll keep one down this right hand margin and I'll put the other one back over to the island I think. Um, I've not seen many fish crashing or moving about on my side of the lake. There's a couple of my dads over to the far reeds. Wind's properly picked up now. I think it said on the weather forecast that it was due to be 40 mile an hour winds and it, and it feels like it's picking up to that now. Pencil light shelter is getting a battering. Oh. On the method feeder, Dad. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> How little? It's a good brain, that. Oh my god. Look at that. That's one of the slabs I was talking about. Apparently they get much bigger in here. Westies wafter. On the Westies wafter. <laughs> On the Westies wafter. Absolutely brilliant. Hold it up, Dad. That's a cracker. Look at how wide it is. to a specimen lake and we're catching bream. <laughs> so my dad's fishing one of his rods on the method feeder in the margin. Look at this slab. Four or five pounds worth of bream now dad. And it's on the Westies wafter as well. Where's, where's your method feeder? So just usual method feeder tactics and there's the Westies wafter. Probably been in about an hour that, hasn't it? What a lovely bronze bream. Hold it up again, let's have, let's have another look at it, Dad. Beautiful condition. It is, look, it's, look, look at how thick it is. Cracker, it's turning like gold underneath. Awesome. Cracker. Let's get it back on the Wessie's wafter. <laughs> Epic. So they're my own wafters, guys, for people that aren't for in the channel. Available at www.westisangling.co.uk. But what a cracker, save the blank. Well done, Dad. I can't believe it. On the method feeder. <laughs> and he's fishing into the margin as well. I think the wind's picking up slightly. I don't know what's giving me this impression, but. <laughs> oh my God. Woo. Well folks, as you can probably see from the lake behind me, we're losing the light levels now and it's coming up to that time where we're probably going to get turfed off. <laughs> she said uh, when she come round before that we need to be off by about four o'clock. It's been a pretty uneventful day. I've not even had a single bleep on the buzzers. My dad's had more indications than I have and he has had that nice bream. So at least it's not been a completely uneventful session. At least not for you guys anyway, as for me. <laughs> this is the second week in a row I've been out and blanked so feeling pretty demoralized by now but that's why they call it fishing and not catching. But I'm gonna soldier on for this last hour and hopefully pick up something. 
But if I don't, I just want to say thanks very much for watching the video and I'll see you in the next West's Angling.